Pedder's suspension rear brake disc conversion kit comes complete with all the required hardware. This truly is a conversion that only requires the usual tools that all workshops have. There's no drilling or machining required. This installation video is based on the Australian Toyota Hilux GUN 125 or GUN 125 platform. In this video, the main difference between the models is the location of the rear ABS sensor located on the rear axle bearing housing. The Hilux faces the rear while the Tacoma faces the front of the vehicle. The testing results displayed are from the Australian Hilux platform and are only an indication of the achievable stopping distances for the Tacoma. The testing results demonstrate that when loaded at the GVM, the vehicle stopping distance decreased by an average of 105 feet with no increase in pedal pressure required. Pedder's suspension rear disc brake conversion will convert the rear brakes from looking like this to this. Lower the hoist to a comfortable working height and engage the safety lock. Remove the wheel, placing it away from the work area. Drain the oil from the final drive. Whilst the oil is draining, take two flexible brake pipe clamps and clamp the hoses. This stops any loss of brake fluid from the rest of the system. Now it's time to remove the brake drum. This may take a little effort as rust can form around the axle flange. Obtain two bolts and screw into the threads on the face of the drum where the arrows indicate and turn them until the drum comes free. To make the rest of the dismantling process easier, remove the old brake shoe assembly as well as the handbrake cable. Disconnect the hydraulic brake pipe from the wheel cylinder. Remove the two retaining bolts from the wheel cylinder and remove it from the backing plate. Don't become too concerned when brake fluid escapes, it's only the residual in the wheel cylinder. Now, remove the ABS sensor. Please be careful so you don't damage the unit and place it well out of the way. Remove the two mounting bolts for the handbrake bracket on the back of the backing plate. Using the correct size spanner, now remove the four axle flange mounting nuts and remove the axle. Please be careful not to drag the axle over the axle seal as this will damage the seal. Remove the O-ring seal from the axle bearing housing to inspect and clean, refit or replace as needed. The circlip is now exposed and this is to be removed. The axle can now be taken to the press and the bearing, housing and backing plate are to be pressed off and removed from the axle. Remove the old retainer and spacer. Please note how the spacer was fitted. Remove the old backing plate Carefully remove the oil seal from the axle bearing housing. This point, knock out the four studs from the axle bearing housing and take the housing to the press and remove the old wheel bearing. With all the new components at the ready, it's time to reassemble. Press the new bearing into the hub. Pedders recommend replacing the rear axle bearings when fitting this kit, but this is at the installer's discretion. With all the new components at the ready, it's time to reassemble. Press the new bearing into the hub. The ABS sensor ring must face the rear of the backing plate to ensure it aligns with the ABS sensor. When pressing the bearing, make sure the tool only aligns with the outer bearing shell to protect the ABS sensor ring during installation. Place the new backing plate onto the hub, return the assembly to the press and press in the four new longer studs.
refit the axle seal into the housing, then reassemble the backing plate and the axle, replace the spacer washer and fit the new retaining collar supplied with the kit. Now, take the assembly to the press and press the axle into the hub. When that's been completed, replace the circlip. Check and make sure the O-ring and housing flange are still clean and free of contaminants. Then replace the axle back into the housing, taking care not to drag the axle over the seal as damage may occur and an oil leak can develop. Before placing the washers and nuts onto the new flange studs, place the caliper bracket onto the studs, ensuring they're on the correct side of the vehicle. When this has been completed, make sure all the nuts are tightened to the correct tension. Before fitting the ABS sensor into the housing, make sure the area is clean. Also, take care not to over tighten the retaining bolt as they can break. Refit the handbrake cable to the backing plate. Place the brake hose bracket onto the studs, ensuring they're on the correct side of the vehicle. The conversion kit is marked for the left and right hand side of the vehicle. Fit the new emergency brake shoe assembly and the handbrake cable. Before fitting the new rotor to the axle, all foreign matter is to be removed from the axle flange as a precise fitting of the rotor to the axle is paramount. If this process does not happen, then a slight vibration may emanate from the rear brake assembly. Fit the new caliper to the brake hose and tighten, ensuring there's no twists in the brake pipe when you fit the caliper to the mounting bracket. Using the shim supplied, centralise the caliper on the mounting bracket, ensuring the caliper is equidistant to the rotor. When the caliper is central, do a final tightening on the cradle mounting bolts. Now it's time to fit the new brake pads to the caliper. Please be careful not to transfer any contaminants to the friction surface. When the pads have been seated correctly, swing the caliper over and fit the retaining bolt. Tighten the bolt to its correct tension. When that's been completed, now we want to remove the clamps from the flexible brake hoses in preparation to bleed the brakes. Before the vehicle is lowered, refill the final drive housing with the appropriate oil. Now, before continuing, check to make sure all new components have been fitted correctly. Now it's time to bleed the brakes to remove all the air from the system. As the calipers are empty, a volume of brake fluid will be required. Monitor the fluid in the brake master cylinder reservoir, ensuring the correct dot number of the brake fluid is used and everything is where it should be and tight. Manually adjust the handbrake shoes to the required tension via the access port in the backing plate. Then check handbrake cable tension and adjust if needed. Replace the wheels, tightening the wheel nuts in the correct sequence and then lower the vehicle. Conduct a final wheel nut check when the vehicle is on the ground. Apply the Petters disc conversion kit sticker to the driver's side B pillar. After all the post-operation checks have taken place, road test the vehicle to bed in the rear brake pads. Check handbrake cable and finally, when road testing, keep a careful ear open and listen for any noises that shouldn't be there, 
and make sure the rear braking system is functioning as it's expected to.